What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Uh, I gotta say, this S13 in the new shop just makes me feel some type of way. Look how nice it looks in here. Uh, we're doing a little bit of TLC to old girl. Got a big shoot coming up later in the day. And this car is slowly becoming the, I have a big reveal or exciting news, drift car. <laughs> Quick bolt check and fluid change and she's good to go. get done today is a little bit of work on the 350Z. My friend Duarte from Drift HQ is in town, uh, so he's actually meeting me up here, dropping off some arms, because I gotta do a little service to the rear end of that thing. I know his car's been in videos before and we've driven together on track, but I still need to formally introduce you guys to Duarte, the founder of Drift HQ. Hey guys, what's up? Excited to be here. So, you guys know how much this cream car means to me. Uh, it's kind of the car that started it all with drifting and everything automotive in my life. That is a lot like this E46 is to Duarte. So, I wanted you to take a second and kind of tell the backstory of this car. This pretty much is my baby, my Mona Lisa, which a lot of people call it because we took our time with it. Although it's not my first drift car, but it's the first in-house built with every possible best part that we could ever put because people kind of didn't take us serious until I built this car. It created the foundation for what Drift HQ is today with the color that we use for this car is the color for all our cars in the team. Only thing that we didn't do in this car was the paint itself. Everything else was done in-house and it pretty much like was an eye-opening for getting out there for the first time and just like you loved it the first time that you saw it this is kind of like one of those piece things that people are like wow it's just a conversation opener this car was the car where i you showed up to the track and i was like who the f is this guy because i thought he was just one of those hard parkers like mike with his ls400 in the pits because this thing you look at it it is a masterpiece the attention to detail and everything on it it's definitely one of those things where you see it and you're like, there's no way this car gets driven hard. But it does, and Duarte is an excellent driver. And you guys might have noticed, uh, there's been quite a bit of Drift HQ stuff here at the compound in this video. So without further ado, I'd like to give a warm official welcome to Drift HQ officially moving into the compound.
you guys haven't seen this building in a long time for a specific reason. Secretly behind the scenes, Dorte and his crew have been moving into this place. So we have for the past three weeks, we actually moved in and we've been fully shipping from here. So we strive ourselves to stay fully stocked on what's gonna get you immediately to the track. So we focus on S chassis, BMW's chassis and a lot of swap stuff. On the left here, we have PMC, we are the only um, North American distributor for it. Jay-Z swaps, SR swaps, Les swaps, and everything else like that. But our main focus is to be able to have every component started from suspension to arms to shifters to brake lines to everything that you possibly could like put together in a car and get to the weekend and start shredding immediately, so. I'd like to interrupt this broadcast for a special message from Drift HQ. For a limited time only, we are going to be providing you with a limited edition Drift HQ shirt like this with the fade as seen right here with all orders over $150. This special is only valid through August, so don't sleep and visit Drift HQ down below in the description. Things might start to kind of come together and make a little bit more sense. There's quite a bit of stuff here between these shelves, these shelves, these shelves over there, and you guys have constantly heard me talking about why I wanted to make the move from the other shop to the new shop. Uh, the plan is for Drift HQ to live in what was our old or our first shop at the main building. So this is kind of like a temporary situation. Um, I guess I left out an important detail too that's pretty damn exciting. I now own the vast majority of Drift HQ. Uh, I don't even remember Duarte. Like, did you just de like did you message me on Facebook one time just be like, yo, do you want to buy Drift HQ? No, it How did was it start? a little bit more intense than that. How we could work together was how it actually started. I came to Orlando a couple of times and we really couldn't figure out what we could possibly do together. Obviously your other shop was tiny so we couldn't move into that shop. And we just came in, we talked, we hung out, we went out to eat and we didn't do much of anything. It wasn't really until the compound became a reality that mm. kind of both things came to life. We went to Drift Week 2 and you were just so happy about that you had found the, the compound that you came with me and you're like, this could possibly fit all of us inside there. But it wasn't until a late night that we were talking about sponsorships on the S15 mm. that the conversation came to light and you're like, I'm actually not running in Juco anymore because I want to get into parts. Mm. And that's where, the, where we land today. This was... A while that makes back, sense. I remember we got burgers. In my mind, yeah. I didn't. I didn't remember the burger day, and I was like, "Did Dorte just like slide in my DMs and be like, 'Yo, you want to buy Drift HQ?'" Yeah, literally, I wish, but no, <laughs> that's not. That's not how it happened. I had reached out to Dorte because I had seen what he had been doing for the community, both with throwing free events, putting so much time and energy into the parts van that had saved my ass and many of my friends when we break parts at the track, and it. It's just really cool. You kind of took like a new approach to drifting and to selling parts in a, a service way that like solved a lot of problems that people have. And I wanted to know a way that I could get involved. Um, obviously I had my relationship with Njuku and I had been wanting to start my own kind of like parts distribution. So that was kind of like a conflict in a way. Um, and we just kept the conversation going and we kind of had mutual respect for what each other was doing. Um, and like you said, like the stars just kind of, I guess, aligned once the compound came about. Yeah, it was more of a situation where we are like, instead of us competing, we could do much better for the community, we could do much better for drivers, better in parts, if we actually work together. And the only way to work together is to create some kind of partnership that we can both give back in a sense. And I feel like for the past seven years, that's pretty much what we have been doing. I started the company by myself, but later on down the line, I brought in Savio and Joel to kind of help me take it to another level. This was like three years ago, I think. And they've done great. They're still here. They're not going anywhere. So for the people think they're like, or they're gone or whatever, Joel is actually here, along with two other ones that moved in with me. Speaking about the guys moving up here, a, it's pretty freaking cool, but we decided we would give them their warm official welcome to the LZ compound in this video right here. reached a threshold in Fort Myers that we could no longer 
do what we wanted to do. We are really big on giving back to the community by having events and doing things that we can actually give back on site. And by every single track closing within three hours, it limited us to having to drive to Orlando all the time. So all that traveling that we're doing essentially is just a waste of time. Giving back to the community is always going to be our main focus and doing everything that we can to grow the sport. Do you like cars like this? Cars like this are cool. If you want to see more cool cars like this, make sure you follow Drift HQ on Instagram right now. If I'm going to do something, I like to be the best that I can possibly be. I like to devote 100% energy to it. Everyone knows this, I'm stretched way too thin right now. Between the compound, between FD, between trying to be a YouTuber, all the, all the things that go on in my head and that I wanna do, I can't devote the time and energy to growing a, a parts fulfillment company, whatever you wanna call it, to the scale that I want it to be. So once we kinda started talking, it made a lot more sense for me to be able to take both your infrastructure that you've created between the site, your crew, and yourself to run this company and to be able to uh, try to create the ideas and wild fantasies that I have and manifest them and bring them to life. Because um, there's just so much stuff that I want to do and I have so many cool ideas, but I feel like I'm held back from a time management perspective. So I'm super excited, man. Me too. On your end, that if you try to actually run this business on this side, you just wouldn't have enough time to do everything. And we were running a situation that we didn't have enough time to keep editing and keep building while still attending events, while still taking care of the customers. So we, we decided like six months to a year or so ago, let's take a step back and actually focus on customer service over making videos. And, and you can see that we've dropped a lot from growing on at least on the media platforms, but we grew on, a, on another side, creating products. We design different CNC shops some in the country, some all over the world, to make us parts that we feel like necessary. Like we were one of the first ones to do an N54 swap and an E46. The first one right now that has a E92 um, swap for a 2J dual caliper for Corvettes. We were the first ones to have that out in the market. So being a first in a lot of things that we do is key to us. First one to have the van that you guys saw in the video. So that van kind of connects us even more to the community because we just keep helping drivers. The more, the more events that we can attend with that van, the more drivers it helps. Holy grazed over the fact that the owner of a company like this drifts. Right. Like, I, I, I didn't really think about it until today, how cool that was. Because the fact that you're out here shredding with everybody, the fact that pretty yeah. much all your guys shred. That's true. It, it like, Everyone in the company drifts. So in this official purchase of Drift HQ, a uh, few things came with it, right? So I got Duarte and his crew, probably the biggest value. All of this inventory, there's a couple cars that we'll go over with you guys, but I think one of the really cool things that I would love to kind of expand upon is the exclusivity. So there are a few brands that Drift HQ is the exclusive distributor of, uh, one of which you already mentioned is PMC that makes all the rad adapters. Yeah. Uh, that's the same kit I have on my E36, by the way. Kind of cool, guess who I got it from? HQ. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we helped you build that whole car, actually. No, you did. Everything. I mean, introduce me. I, I feel like that was also a, a pretty big selling point. The customer service was on point. That's true. I don't know how Duarte has a life giving the service that he does to all these people. So hopefully we will expand sales team so Duarte can have more life. Yes, more uh, life. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, another huge one is FDF. Um, I personally don't run FDF on any of my cars, but I know we helped Colette install it on her Corvette. Uh, it drives really great. FDF essentially makes a ton of angle kits for all sorts of cars and a lot of the newer cars as well, as well as Corvettes, like you said, Mustangs and parts for cars that nobody else would touch. And he's also one of our drivers in FD Prospect. Destroy or Die, which we have exclusivity as well on that, which they make so many MX-5 parts. That's the only things that we stock for them. Taylor Ray runs these. So he loved it. So and they pretty back. much turned us into them. Like we saw that they make a great, um, great product. Dan is really good, really good customer service. And we also have CNC 71, which is a friendly, budget kind of angle kit. Anybody that's trying to get in the E36, E46 game, this is their number one choice. They have mini kits for the IS300, for the E36, E46 as well. Small little guys that make cool parts and we find them all over the world. And if you're one of them out there, message me. DM me on Instagram and tell me what you make and it's possible that we put it on the website. I can't even stress enough 
how many little companies started out of a garage and then they became a legitimate company that they have their own website. We sell SBR, we sell Drift Tech. These are all small guys that just started making one single part and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, maybe I can make two parts or three parts. If you're out there, come find me and we're gonna get your parts on the shelf. These drop ship sites are kind of like a dime a dozen. That is not what I want, right? Like you can tell by this warehouse, there's, a, there's quite a bit of inventory in here. Um, once we're moving into the other shop, we'll be able to expand more. But like, yo, in the, the old shop right now, we have, I don't, I don't wanna know how many there are, but there's so many Prisma seats a lot. That, that I can't even walk in there. My goal, my vision with this is to be able to walk from our shop two bays over and have this beautiful warehouse stocked full of all the stuff that we use all the time. It's so annoying when you go to order something from a site and then they, you get a message like three days later and like, hey, yeah, like we just contacted the, you know, the supplier and they're actually out of it, like that. We wanna have stuff on the shelf. So when you order, it gets shipped from here, we make sure the product's good. We make sure it gets to you as fast as it possibly can. We need stuff overnighted. Like a day could make or break you making it to an event, right? And I know Duarte has mm. personally for me gone out of his way to make sure stuff gets shipped on weekends, answered phones late at night. And that is something that we've talked about potentially adding on into the future. Like how cool would it be if there was a phone line that people could call for support on the weekends, late at night, if we had a parts courier service that could deliver stuff locally. There's just so many ways that we can improve service, right? Like it is the, it would be amazing if we could develop something consistent so we could guarantee people that their parts would ship on the weekend if they paid a little bit more, have sales staff stay later, maybe on the weekends, who knows? I know that I'm constantly building my stuff after hours. Most people are building their after work mm -hmm. and it's inconvenient when all the places you call that you need advice from aren't there so it's on the weekend that you're gonna fall in a situation that you're right about to go to an event your car just got put on the lift you go look at something then you're missing this part your lollipop is falling out and you don't have something and that's where we come in we're consistently on instagram messenger on the website we try to answer people late. I'm not promising you guys that we're going to answer you every single time that you call after hours or message or do whatever email, but we know the importance of having something shipped, delivered. Maybe somebody just went and bought a car recently and they want to finish the car for that event and then parts didn't come from other places, so they're just trying to get a part. People have finished cars on the track and like went now drifting with all the parts that we have in a van in general. There's many companies competing against us, but if you go on Facebook and you're basing off customer service and customer service, we're always gonna win because we are drivers at the end of the day again, and we understand that. Duarte does, and we're gonna continue to pride ourselves on customer service. I just wanna throw this out there though. Don't be a f head. I hate when people call a company, ask for advice or like what parts to use in their build and then go and buy it from somewhere else. Have some respect, whether it's with Drift HQ or with another company, don't waste someone's time and then go buy the part somewhere else. If you're gonna call and you're gonna seek input on the build, try to reward the people that give you that insight and share with you the knowledge that they've developed over time. Like I said, whether it's Drift HQ or another place, order your parts from that person, and if their price is slightly higher and you can save a few bucks somewhere else, let them know, because a lot of these parts and a lot of the things that are stocked are actually regulated by the manufacturer and are supposed to be at a certain price. So there's a chance that either there was a price change across the board that maybe one company isn't aware of, or that the other company is not obeying the rules and they could actually lose their rights as a distributor for selling under what they have to. I've expressed to them before, as well as you guys, about the whole situation of me kind of feeling trapped and wanting to do my own parts company. And that's essentially what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of took the foundation that you laid out with Drift HQ, and it's gonna make it a lot easier to get where I wanted to be in a year than me trying to do it and get there in three years. Exactly. So, Drift HQ did uh, accommodate the public before in their old location. That is not something that is going to happen here for obvious reasons, for privacy, for security, but we are going to work on developing some sort of courier service, whether it's meeting people at a certain location, delivering parts locally. We wanna have the best presence that we could possibly have for Orlando and the best support for the people that we know are already in this community. But unfortunately, I just wanna make it very clear in this video that it's not gonna be a place that you guys can just rock up to. We've been talking a lot about parts, but uh, that is just kinda the beginning. One of the other things that we wanna focus on and kinda dive into is actually drift rentals. So you guys know uh, I've quite often driven other people's cars, whether it's a rental, a friend, whatever. Uh, a kind of cool business model that we wanted to do something with being so close to OSW is offer a service of renting people cars. So whether it's a seat time car or something crazy, uh, Drift HQ did come with two cars of which I'm not going to say much about it, but probably the most stoked about this thing. I kind of just want to slam it on these wheels and daily it. Yeah. But look, if you got to rent a fully caged car for a comp or something, this thing would slay. 
It's a stock V6, but these things rip. Some pretty famous drivers have driven this car in the past. Actually, one of them now is like a multi... <laughs> <laughs> Another one too, if you're more familiar with like a Z chassis or a G chassis, I should say. We got this beautiful unit right here. Seat time stallion. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. Uh, we've got a lot of builds planned. I kind of want to build cars that will probably eventually become rental cars and other purposes on the Drift HQ channel, which by the way, go subscribe to the Drift HQ channel, please. And will give us a purpose to build these cars and document so we can have really good DIYs and tutorials for you guys of installing the parts that we sell, gain more knowledge from them, and then also end up with a car that we can rent at the track. So one of them is going to be a Corvette. This is not a uh, Drift HQ car, although it is a Drift HQ driver. This is Savio, the man behind all my beautiful granite and the pretty much, would you call him the event coordinator? Of event Drift coordinator HQ? and just the best cook ever, right? You could say I, that. I feel so f bad that I didn't talk about that. What is the, what is the meat called that he makes? Picanha. God. So good. Savio is just a big bear. Yeah. Takes care of everybody. He's like, we call him United Nations because he is, he has no enemies. <laughs> he is everybody's friend. He makes everybody feel loved. So shout out to him for bring that's his car the other one is also his car his cop car and he's also going to work with adam in your event right coming in december yeah the the so. date uh, is not what i originally posted it's december 18th that may might have been what i posted we'll fill you more details on that there's a yeah. lot of exciting stuff in drift issues going to be a huge part of that um this is duarte's personal car blue thunder beautiful e36 s54 powered Drift week machine another one of duarte Dorothy's basically like the BMW version of myself. A lot of these cars that you see here are actually his personal cars. Um, and then his kids' cars are over there. The, are those Z4 Z3s. Coupes? Z3 Z3s. Coupes. So this car here, for us to be able to attend car shows and stands, what, look at this, Mikey. Even you could approve <laughs> this thing. It is so low, but yet it's drift ready, pretty much. It has seats inside, a uh, tucked in hydro which a lot of people, this is our um, Drift HQ Hydro here. I switched the windows to the right side and pretty much like you could drift, it has a full SLR kit. And this car is it, just because we wanna be able to have parts that are not specifically only for drift cars that you could apply for street cars for them to drive better, look better and all kinds, right? I changed the whole vision for Drift HQ because of this car as well. Hola, me llamo Adam. Sabes que Drift HQ tiene personas que hablas español? Que interesante. Es muy importante tenemos personas que hablar en multiple lenguas. Yo no sé if mi español es perfecto, pero yo sé que Drift HQ es perfecto. It, right now it's mainly Spanish as the second language, right? Mainly, yeah. Okay. Then Portuguese is the third. Mm -hmm. Pero si hablas español o portugués, nosotros podemos ayudar. Adiós. So this is Savio's car, as you can see here. We built him a whole fresh new car this year because he told us his car in um, the Gambler. So this car, the motor is actually pulled out of it as we are uh, rebuilding it right now. We're going to put it in and in a couple weeks or so, he'll back, be back and ripping. This car here, we did not build. Greg Jones, I'm sorry. Look at the color now. He hasn't even seen the, the new color. He keeps really? asking me for pictures. And no, I'm not selling it back to you. It's a, it has a LS6 in it, so it's a pretty, pretty neat car. Look at it. It's Marco's nemesis right there, pretty much. Jay-Z, LS, it's a sick build. And this is Andrew Mauer's car. This is one of our drivers, been a long time friend of ours, has been with us since the beginning pretty much. Goes to every single event that we do, helps us with the events, like just is, a, is an awesome person. Nothing was spared on this car and it's, it's a beast. Six, 700 horsepower car is doing really well. It's like three months old. It was Freddie's car. This was Freddie's oh car Oh my before. God, I didn't even realize that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that came out so clean. Mm -hmm. So I think we kind of downplayed Chris and Cricket as well, because those two yeah. are just like a little mastermind mad team together between the fabrication and mechanical stuff. Um, and I'm like super stoked to have them as an asset here, both for maintaining these cars, for the rental cars and for development, right? So we've mentioned before that Drift HQ makes some of their own parts and we'll show you guys a couple more of those things inside. But having those guys kind of working on these little side projects and things will let me break free from all of the half working broken cars that we're gonna be working on over in exactly. that shop. And they can go to town and we can develop things on these chassis, build new cars, test products, 
I'm gonna show how well this stuff works. So this beauty here is Cricket's car. He is just an all wheel drive, soon to be LS swap, but not yet. These three here, this one is my um, personal drift car that I built because I built my kids two Z3s. I loved it so much that I wanted to get a, a third one so that I can actually drift with them, which I'm going this weekend. You you were there the, actually the first time you need they to say ever how old drifted. They, are. You need to they, say how they old are 15 and 13 years old and they shred absolutely shred like first time on the track everyone marco was like i'm quitting i'm not drifting anymore this is it they really like they got in the cars and it just muscle memory from a lot of sim practicing and it's cool to see new these are kind of like the miatas you know mm -hmm. like they're just they're easy to work on they look cool shout and out jimmy's mom with a low budget i would say like a cut like two three thousand bucks you can get yourself on track and you can have a fun little car that's not gonna blow the bank pretty much. One of these cars I think I paid 800 or 1,000 bucks for. So you can still drift relatively cheap and still have fun at the same time. My brain has literally just been vomiting with ideas. I've had so much cool stuff that I've wanted to implement based on my own experiences. So like, I want to kind of reconfigure an entire influencer program uh, based on a lot of people and friends that I've met. So there's a lot that we can do as a company to make those people's lives easier and help grow drifting as a sport. And I'm super excited about that. In addition to having a great relationship with customers, uh, Duarte has also fabricated a lot of really good relationships with companies. So he gets first dibs on things like the first ever FIA Prisma seats in the country. This is huge. A lot of people have been asking for these. Uh, they make a lot of really cool seats like these. Dorte has kept stock of a lot of it. We have, there's gotta be at least a hundred of these seats here. In stock, on the shelves, ready to ship, where a lot of the guys that are listening to them, they ain't got it. They try to get it from turn 14, turn 14 ain't got it. Drift HQ got it. What's also cool too is like, I can bring now some of my relationships to the table that I formed with these companies through sponsorships and through cars that I've built. And we now have the infrastructure, the support, to be able to take these companies on, stock their stuff on the shelf, help people that want to purchase this stuff with information. Like, I don't want to say all these brands because there's a lot that I've been working on behind the scenes. Yeah. Actually, before we even uh, were dead set on this whole business acquisition thing, um, that now we're going to be on Drift HQ instead of me selling an LZMFG. But like, there's some really exciting stuff. Some deals that were really hard to work through that are going to be huge and that it's going to be awesome for you guys and awesome for us. Um, I know you talked briefly about, I, I know what this is, but I was going to make a, a phallic joke about it because it kind of looks like a p hole. <laughs> um, don't put that in the video, Mike. Yeah, this is um, a LS water pump delete if you're running a electric water pump. And this is something that Chris came up with. Chris is very knowledgeable. He actually went to school to learn how to design parts and stuff. And when we come up a, in a situation that nobody has made anything up and we need something that's going to actually make the car run cooler, better or more efficiently, we come up with a solution. And this was his, like he came up with an idea. We ran it through our CNC guy. He came up with a plan how it was going to work 100% and then it becomes a product. So we have many other products here on the table, like the N54 engine mounts, fully full made out of billet. We have um, the Corvette dual calipers, which is our probably the most sold product that we have on the shelves right now. I took my car to a shop in that area. Nobody knew what they were doing with the drift cars. And that is the reason why I actually opened Drift HQ in the first place. And if you guys have any requests as well as something that we can think of that's not gonna be way out of reach, we can put it in our notes and say, when we have the time, we can possibly develop it. There's many parts that we were thinking of developing, another company comes out with it. So instead of just becoming copycats, we just stop development completely on that part and then just keep moving. Like it, this sport is evolving. I think it's just the beginning of it. And I think there's so much more that's gonna come out of this. So many new cars that we're gonna figure out. I think in a bigger picture, I, it would be a really cool goal to have our own CNC here at some point and to be able to like actually develop stuff on site. Uh, for now, pretty much all of our capital is going to go into stocking shelves even more than you already see it. Uh, there's a lot of brands that you already stock. There's a lot yeah. of brands that I want to stock from other yeah. countries, Australia, the UK, Europe. It's going to take a lot to get there. Um, so there are a lot of goals that we kind of have together that will potentially, I don't want to say be tabled until the next year, but um, to be competitive in this game, you really have to spend quite a bit of money in inventory. And that's going to be a, a pretty big thing yeah. for us right off the rip. So we got an order, bro. I think we're going to close out the video here. There, this is obviously like a, a pretty complex acquisition, transaction, mega move, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and there's so much that we probably haven't even touched base on. 
I wanted to do the best job we could of possibly trying to touch all our bases and talk about as much as we can. Well, there's gonna be stuff and I know you guys are gonna have questions, so we'll definitely have a follow-up, whether that will live on my channel or the Drift HQ channel, we'll see. But do the best you can. Make sure to follow Drift HQ on Instagram, follow them on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, TikTok. Do you have a TikTok? Yes. Damn, these motherfuckers have TikTok. I didn't even know that Thank you guys. This is pretty freaking awesome. I'm beyond stoked and hope you guys are too.